Hello, what you see here is a pressure pulse being trapped in a pipe. So you see the compression when it arrives at a closed end is reflected as a compression. Now guess what happens if we make this end an open end instead? Did you notice that the compression when it arrives at the open end is reflected as a rarefaction and the rarefaction when it arrives at the closed end is reflected as a compression. So why is this happening? Um, well, this is not in your syllabus so you don't have to worry about this but if you are really curious, you can read the appendix in my lecture notes. But what's important for you to know is that when the compression or rarefaction arrives at the open end, it actually gets reflected. It does not just uh, disappear into thin air and as a result, you can trap a compression or rarefaction even in an open pipe, a pipe that has both ends open. And so because of that, you can set up a standing sound wave even in a pipe that's open at both ends. We call that an open pipe. In this video, all I want you to be able to do is to tell me whether it's a node or empty node that has formed at the ends of the pipe. So for an open pipe, you have a displacement empty node at the open end which means it's a pressure node at the open end. Now you are looking at a closed pipe. A closed pipe has one closed end and one open end. Well, I'm sure you have been clearer if we call this a one end closed, one end open pipe, but you know, we are quite lazy, so we call it a closed pipe. So if you are talking about a closed pipe, then the closed end is always a displacement node and the open end is always a displacement anti node, which means the closed end is a pressure anti node and the open end is a pressure node. Now, how do you memorize all this? Uh, it's actually quite easy. Most students intuitively will uh, accept that the open end must be a displacement anti node. Air particles are free to oscillate here. Whereas at the closed end, uh, the air particles cannot displace leftward into the closed end, right? So this is a displacement node. So if you can remember this, then the pressure is just the flipped version, yeah? So displacement node is pressure anti node and displacement anti node is pressure node. Another way to remember this is well the open end is actually connected to the outside, right? It's connected to the atmosphere. So no matter what you try to do here, the atmosphere will always be able to compensate by either sending more air in or letting more air move away. So this end is always maintained at atmospheric pressure. So the pressure is stuck at atmospheric pressure here. That's why it's a pressure node. So that's another way you can remember. As for the closed end, well, because the air are not free to displace here, so you can you can see the air coming in and moving away to, co to cause a compression and rarefaction. Here. That's why at the closed end, you have large variation in pressure. And that's why it's a pressure anti node. Or since I've revealed to you the secrets that a compression is reflected as a compression, so uh, you, you realize that the incident and reflected wave will sum up will superpose to give you double compression and doubly rarefaction as well. Yeah, that's another way to uh, tell yourself why there's a pressure anti node here. On the other hand here, remember a compression is reflected as a rarefaction. So they were superposed to become nothing. That's why the pressure here is stuck at atmospheric pressure. Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!